Hello my friends and welcome, my name is Dennis. Today we're gonna review the life of a pilot animation story from this YouTube channel, Zero Budget Stories. And they have the videos about different professions like the life of a subway driver and they make the fun video probably the fun, but actually partially it is sad, uh, the life of the pilot. I found it interesting and today we're gonna review whether the story true or fake. Let's go for it. Congratulations guys, you graduated pilot. Now go back and refund the 100k debt you have. All right, sadly it is true, people do not have enough funds to invest in their future flight careers. And it is damn expensive, as they say, $100,000. It is the normal price nowadays in many of the countries. In some of the countries, especially in Eastern Europe, you can become a pilot for $60,000 or 60,000 euros, something like that. But for example, in Netherlands, it would cost you more than 100 grand. That's why people have debts, they have to take the loans in a bank, and then they return it for many, many years after they obtain their first job, because your first salary is quite low as the first officer it's some of the regional airline and people who usually have that sum of money if they're not passionate in aviation why would they invest in their flight career to obtain like 3,000 euros maximum at the very beginning being the first officer again in the regional airline or for some low-cost carrier to have the crazy schedule and we're gonna return to that in this video so the guy is crying because he have to pay this debt for a very long time <laughs> Early morning. It's good, he's the first officer already, as far as I see, and he's going for the work. Actually, this animation haven't shown us one of the main difficulties in your flight career to obtain your first job, because with a low flight hours experience, there are not many airlines willing to hire you. The competition is very strong, and if you get your airline job right after graduation, you are very lucky. Security. <laughs> Please put your belongings in the containers. Okay, now he is the captain. Was promoted on the way. <laughs> I'm just laughing. It's just an uh, animation. We don't really care about uh, his position, his rank. But it's just fun to watch. You may see the look in the eyes and security. Yes, we have to pass security all the time as well as the passengers. You can go. Stop. We will need to check deeper. <laughs> <laughs> Stop again. We will proceed to check your bags. Oh, that reminds me the Paris Charles de Gaulle Airport. They always check you very precisely if you are a flight crew or a cabin crew. I don't know why, but they always do that. Once I told security that I have the fire eggs and they were looking at me like that, where I say it, in the cockpit. And definitely there is no big logic because you are not allowed to bring the sharp object, but in the cockpit you do have the sharp object, for example, the fire eggs. And actually as the pilot, you're really controlling the airplane, you don't need sharp objects or explosives to do something with it potentially well at least there were some of the cases of the pilots gone crazy in a cockpit like with German wings accident so security will not solve the problem if there is some problem in the mind of the pilot here is my visa and general declaration yeah, the border control in some of the countries you have the separate line for the flight and cabin crew it's way more easier to pass the border control the passport control for the crew members compared to the regular passengers then you usually have to stay in the queues but there are some countries i believe denmark was like that that they put our crew into the same line with the passengers sometimes and then you go somewhere you have the rest period for just one night you don't need to waste the time like 30 minutes staying in the queue so it's terrible please look at the camera yeah it also like that thank you <laughs> here are the documents <laughs> what's up moon i'm happy to see you i hope you are ready for the flight 
No, I'm not. We have another 10 hours long flight with one day stop and a jet lag of seven hours. This company is a joke. And best of all, we're landing in Kathmandu, one of the hardest airport and landing procedures. Yes, but you're just the co-pilot. So you will be playing Candy Crush anyways. <laughs> yes, indeed. Okay, so it's the joke, but part of it is real. If you fly this long haul airline, you have the jet lags for sure, but you have the special regulations for that. So you are not allowed to fly right away. You need to have the proper rest period. It depends on your local regulations. So if you've flown like 10 hours plus briefings, blah, 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 you should have the rest for 30 hours, something like that, because your duty time is 15 hours around. But I may admit that the duty time and the rest period regulations do not represent the actual picture. They do not count the physiological difference of every individual, so there is no pretty much gap for individual to adapt to the different time zones. And if you have to fly as the passenger at first, some airlines do not count this time as your duty time. So sometimes you go somewhere as the passenger, the airline counts that you already had the rest in the airplane as the passenger, and then you start your schedule from that point. Unfortunately, we had those cases in my airline, Ukraine International Airlines. I remember the absolutely crazy flight, for example, to Dubai as the dead head crew member, so as the passenger, and then you have to conduct the flight right away in a few hours as the active crew member to Delhi then coming back to Dubai and flying back as the passenger so totally exhausted after all but everything is precisely according to the local regulations and documents nice Boeing 747 your seat 32 D sir oh they're flying as the that had crew member so as the passenger is somewhere welcome on board Thanks. exactly as I told you First officer is playing. I really hope no one sits next to me. I'll have two or three seats for the price of one. Landing gear? Down. Three green lights. Oh no, they were the passengers, so now they're in the cockpit. Lights. Emergency lights? Armed. Alternate flaps? Off. Window heat? On. Free flight checklist is complete. Actually, it was. Oh no, I think it's the Ukraine International Airlines uh, hat that we see here. Yes, for sure. Emblema is shadowed, it's blurred, but, but I recognize our uniform. So maybe they took this image from one of my videos. You know, so yes, it's our Boeing 737 for sure. So they showed the Boeing 747 from outside, but it's the Boeing 737 of our airline. Yes, the placards, everything is from the Ukraine International Airlines. Awesome. Thank you for taking our airplanes out there. <laughs> you want me to do the passenger's announcement? No, don't worry. I will do it this time. Dear passengers and welcome. All right, this mic is, I think, for Airbus, not for the Boeing. We have the different type of the mic, but I like this one more. Welcome on board on flight 3905 to destination Kathmandu. Time of flight is 10 hours 35 minutes. <laughs> Outside temperature is 95 degrees with sunshine expected. Thank you very much. V1. Rotation. Nice Good. airplane. The 747 is absolutely beautiful. The arrival will be painful. I was wrong earlier today. We're landing at 5 a.m. and taking off the same day at 5 p.m. Rest is equal to duty now. Like if everything <laughs> was normal. Uh, yes. No, actually it's not possible in real life. The rest is not equal to duty. It's against any kind of the regulations as far as I know. It should be at least doubled. Especially if you have the long haul flight with 747 as they show like for 10 hours you'll have at least one day off somewhere. So 24 hours or as I say to you the double of your duty time period. But if you fly the original airline Boeing 737 Airbus 320 you might have the shorter rest time. For example overnight stay somewhere but you have just a couple of flights and they're not very long as they have right now. 10 hours it's a damn long flight. Yes, I know. All the rest days after flight considered as day off. 
Yes, Chad? Hey, co-pilot Moon. I'd like to know if you want something to eat or to drink. It's fine for me. Thanks, Chad. And you, Wajak, do you want something? I would like to drink apple juice, but is it free? Of course not. <laughs> it's taken from your salary. Do you still want something? This is pathetic, mate. Paying for your own food while working. We already have low quality uniforms. The crew changes every time as well as the rosters. I'm basically flying for free until I pay back my training. So some airlines definitely do not provide meals for their crew members. But if you fly this long haul flight, it's simply impossible. By the way, here we have already the ATR-72 cockpit. I recognize it for sure. Nice animation with cockpits of the airplanes I used to fly. Awesome! So if you fly for example for the low cost airline this year or maybe Ryanair, you have to buy your own meals and that's why we might see some of the crew members buying the stuff in Starbucks or whatever just in the terminal building of the airport. But as for the drinks, I have never heard that you have to pay for them. Well, maybe for the fresh apple juice you have to pay but for the standard one, I don't think so. You have usually coffee, tea, water, all of the juices, standard juices, free for the cabin crew as well as for the flight crew. But here the first officer says the point. I'm basically flying for free until I pay back my training. So definitely if you have the big debt for your flight training, you have to lower the budget to pay it as fast as possible because training might cost even more than 100,000 grants, including the type rating because some of the airlines hire just type rated pilots and you have to pay sometimes 20,000 extra for that. So 120 at least for your pilot training somewhere in developed country of the Western Europe or across the ocean. But I believe that in the United States of America, this is a little cheaper compared to the Western Europe. Yes, I know. I have been doing this for 20 years now. <laughs> Zuma 227 cleared the land. Runway 2 ain't right. Parking brake? Set. Standby power switch? Off. Final checklist is complete. It was a pleasure flying with you. See you tomorrow. So actually everything is correct. The ATC is correct in this video. The checklists. And after all, yes, we usually say it was a pleasure to fly with you. See you next time. <laughs> Again, the security check. Standard animation. Stop. <laughs> standard but when you arrive somewhere usually you do not have the security checks in some of the airports you might have but they're not very strict may i help you sir yes could you bring me to the air crew hotel please are you sure it's one hour drive from here <laughs> what do you mean what I mean is that they changed the Two Stars Hotel recently, so it's no longer near the airport but far away in the countryside. So yes, it might happen. Unfortunately, sometimes you have the hotel really far away from the airport. In some of the cases, you don't have the other choice. Like for example, then I was flying in Garuda Indonesia Airlines. We had the hotel around one hour away from the airport, but the airline regulations was to have the hotel at least four stars for the crew members. And the only hotel they were able to find is around one hour away from the airfield. Unfortunately, it takes the time, but according to the airline regulations, they put it into your duty time so it was okay you still have the full rest period then you arrive in the hotel but some of the airlines do not put the travel time into the duty time period and there you have the problem i believe they show the real Kathmandu city uh, who live in Kathmandu or who was there tell me if it's real in my latest video I told you about the Emirates Airlines and they also have the remote housing for the crew members not in Dubai city itself a little bit outside so you have to spend some of the time to get to the airport as well but you have the comfortable car with the driver so it's not a huge problem I would say I wonder if Emirates put the transportation time into the duty time of the crew members and here they spoke about two-star hotel. I have never been in that hotel flying for any kind of the airline in my career. 
<laughs> and I was amazed by his talent. He was able to cook 10 kilograms of hey, pasta. Can you stop talking, please? I'm trying to concentrate. Do not hey, be disrespectful Wajak. to Wake me. Wake up. Please. Wake up, man. Okay, he had a bad dream, but actually it's not really far away from reality. Sometimes you have your colleague who is a little bit talkative and then you want to concentrate on something. He or she just might disturb you a little. I had one colleague who was talking, talking even below 10,000 feet all the time. And I strictly followed this uh, sterile carpet philosophy. I asked him not to talk below 10,000 feet. If possible, he talked again. I asked him again and it happened like three times. So everything depends on individual, but during the cruise flight, you might have some time to talk. But it's better to have the limit because you are in the restricted space in the cockpit. You are in the same biofield, let's say, with your colleagues. So it's better not to be over exaggerated if your colleague doesn't want to speak a lot. It's better to respect the individual preferences in this case. Dude, it's time to go. What happened? Why are you sleeping in the airport? It's because the hotel was too far from the airport. I only had like 5 hours maximum in between the two flights, if we count the taxi, the procedures and getting ready. So I slept in the airport again. Yes, I know that very well. Uh, it have never happened to me personally and I have never heard about those cases but I saw one of the cases with Ryanair crew then they just slept in the airport but not in the waiting zone they were in the separate room for the airline representatives but they were caught on camera sleeping at the coaches and some were sleeping just on the floor and all of those crew members were fired later on because it is the reputational damage for the airline but I think all the system worked for them to stay in the airfield and to sleep in that room. Airline didn't provide them with a proper hotel as it should give them. So I think it was inappropriate way to lay off the cabin crew and the flight crew of that flight. Well, we don't really know the details of the story, but still firing the crew because they were sleeping, I think it's the stupid way. That's why this time I booked a hotel at my own cost. All right, so he booked the hotel nearby for his own cost. I also haven't heard about those kind of the stories. Dubai. Is it happening in real life? I would admit that it is happening like that in a cruise flight. Is it disturbing to the other crew member? Obviously, if you play it loud. Hey, Moo, can you please stop playing Candy Crush? We're switching airspace class. We need to contact traffic air control. They can't know we are gaming in the cockpit. Yes, don't worry. Well, if you need to do your job, it's totally unacceptable to play the game. You need to put it aside. Honestly, if you are allowed to read some of the books, newspapers, whatever in the cockpit, why not to play some Handy Crush game, whatever? <laughs> because you have the same attention disturbance at that particular time and the other crew member takes responsibility for the radio and the aircraft control for the time being. But again, the active crew member, the working one, should not be disturbed with your games or whatever you are doing. It is pretty much similar to the controlled rest, then one of the crew members just slips in the cockpit by the time then the other one controls the radio and the airplane in general. The more airplanes with all of those automated features with announcement systems allow safely to control the airplane just for one pilot, the other one is needed for backup, for decision making, so basically one pilot may fly the airplanes for entire flight. But for safety, we have two of the pilots, each pilot has its own duties. And I think we're gonna fly like that for a very long time. Seattle approach, Zoomer 227, 20 miles southwest of Seattle VOR at 7500, en route Arlington, request transit class Bravo airspace. Zoomer 227, Seattle approach, Squawk 3121, guided. Dude, what the hell? This radio is not working again. I know, it's always the same. Uh, so we have at least two of the stations, some airplanes have three of the stations, 
VHF to be able to communicate with air traffic control. So it is a very rare case that you don't have the proper radio communication signal. Well, there are some of the areas uh, where you may have the bad signal, for example, in Cairo airspace, where once I had the issues in Istanbul airport, but it was the issue with the ground station. If you have the issues and disturbance with one station, you change to the other one, VHF2, try to communicate. If it doesn't help, try to call 121.5. That's the emergency frequency where you may call the nearby station. Or try to communicate using your fellow traffic like the airplanes flying around maybe they may retransfer your message if it doesn't help put the squawk 7600 and perform the loss of radio signal procedure but it seems like it wasn't the case in this flight finally we are arriving i can't poop on these toilets <laughs> okay we're back <laughs> yeah, some of the toilets, um, I may admit that some of the toilets, especially on Boeing 737, they are not comfortable. On ATR, for example, the toilets are way more comfortable. On Boeing, you have this curve. For me, it's very uncomfortable to use the toilets on Boeing 737, not just, uh, as he said, for poo, but also for other stuff. For my height, they're too curved, so yeah, it's, it's not good. <laughs> But sometimes you obviously have to use them for your physical, physiological needs. It was a pleasure working with you for two days. Me too. See you soon for the simulator, the line check, theoretical and medical exams. <laughs> it's happening soon. <laughs> Yeah, that's the issue also. So in your flight roster, you also need to put your own self-preparation for the flight simulator and for some theoretical stuff. So definitely this job is not for everyone. It's time consuming. You need to understand that you'll spend the vast time of your private life for your flight career. In most of the cases, you wouldn't be looking like that, but there will be the moments for you then you will be really exhausted after you conducted the flight. So definitely the amount of the stress that sometimes we face with is not for everyone. If you want to be the airline pilot, you should love this stuff. Otherwise, you wouldn't like it. <laughs> yeah, I cannot sleep because of the jet lag, I understand. Well, guys, it was a real fun animation. I'll put the link in the video description just below for you to check the original one. Really grateful that someone shows the issues of our profession in this humor way. I would say that some of the points were not correct, were not true, but in general, it shows how difficult this job could be. So, my friends, hope you enjoyed this video and have a great time.